Hello, everyone. Well, I'm sure you're ready for the bus to be here, but before we go, we need to talk about the most important topic, and that is the assignment that you will be doing to share your museum experience when you get back from your trip. And that assignment is going to be the museum blog assignment. Please take a look at the packet given to you by your teacher now, and you can follow along. First of all, what is this assignment? Field trips don't have assignments. Ah, uh, but they do. The assignment that you're going to do is write a blog post highlighting your favorite museum exhibit. Your persuasive paragraph will persuade a future visitor to check out this exhibit, display, or photograph. When you are done, you will publish your post on Fusion. Now, you're not writing a paragraph just out of the blue. You're going to take it step by step, and this short video is going to show you how to get started, one piece at a time. Before we start, though, we should discuss what is a blog and what are you going to be expected to do exactly. What is a blog? Originally created from the words web and log, a blog is just that. A blog is the logging of one's thoughts, ideas, experiences, and more, all in one place on the web. You've probably seen them around, but what makes them so great? Well, blogs are easy to use, and with a few clicks, you can share thoughts, opinions, news, anything. Your blog is a staple of who you are, the ultimate expression of you on the web. Your blog's theme is what controls how your blog looks. You can choose a theme and personalize it with your own colors and or background images to find the look that fits you. It's easy to change themes as well, so you'll always be sure that there's a look and feel out there that fits with your personality and makes it easy for visitors to find what they're looking for. Most blog themes are made up of four main sections, the header, the sidebar, the footer, and the body. The header is comprised of your blog's title or logo if you have one and your main navigation menu. The menu is the way that your guests should be easily able to navigate the content of your site. Menus are a natural part of our web experience and should link readers to the various content and pages found on your blog. Sidebars. Blogs usually have them. This area generally includes widgets and things you want to highlight, such as your favorite links, the popular content on your blog, recent activity, subscription options, and social media tools, just to name a few. The footer rests at the bottom of your blog. This is typically used to display content that doesn't often change, but that you would like your readers to have easy access to, including links to read more about you or a link to a contact page. Lastly, the most important area of your blog is the body, the main content area. Usually, this is the primary reason people have come to your blog. It's where your thoughts and ideas come to life as you share them within the post or page the content lies within. Post? Page? What's the difference? Pages are different from posts. They're normally static, displaying standard content such as an about me or a contact page. Posts, on the other hand, are all the good stuff where you publish your thoughts. In a standard blog format, posts get shown on the main page of your blog, usually in an order that places the most recent and relevant information at the very top of the list. These are things like your daily updates or news about your niche topic. When a new story is posted, it appears at the top of your blog for the world to see. This used to be done in journals. Posts are an online version of a journal entry made public for others to see. Best of all, posts give the option for a comment section as well, so others can add their thoughts to yours, share in a conversation with you, or just provide feedback about your blog. This brings a community element to blogs, making them a popular medium of expression and information sharing. Blogs make it easy to share images, video, and other types of media files, giving you complete freedom of creative expression. And now, with the popularity of mobile phones, your blog can be viewed anytime, from anywhere, in the palm of your hand. Blogs are for everyone, and people of all ages share on blogs every day for school, work, and play. But no matter what you want to do, blogging is a great way to connect with other people and get your ideas out there. So what are you waiting for? Get in on the fun and start blogging today. So 
this will be a great way for you to share what was your favorite exhibit or photograph or display that you see today. So while you're at the museum or the museum, you really want to be looking for which one is your favorite and which one do you think that you can quote unquote sell to other people. Now, again, don't panic. You're not going to actually be creating a full on blog with widgets and everything else. The only thing that you're going to be responsible for is for creating a single blog post. And that blog post is actually going to happen on your Fusion page. We're not going to talk about that today. Today, all we need to do is brainstorm some ideas and get organized so that when you come to class next period, your English class, you'll be ready to write your review paragraph. The only thing that you are doing today is selecting the exhibit that you want to write about and brainstorming ideas by completing the 11 sentence graphic organizer. This organizer is the last page in your packet. Once you've written your paragraph, you have a whole week to post it to the Fusion blog. The blog post itself isn't actually due until next Wednesday. That's important because you're going to learn more about how to post in your English class next period. Finally, after you post and everyone else posts, it makes sense to be part of that community that they mentioned in the video. So you're going to be required to comment on at least one other student's Fusion post when all said and done, and that is due another week after that. So the final due dates are due next class, graphic sentence organizer. Your actual final paragraph will be posted to the blog by next Wednesday. And then two weeks from, this, from today, you'll be commenting on someone else's Fusion post. Now you may be asking, well, I've never done an 11 sentence paragraph before. How do I do an 11 sentence graphic organizer? Let me walk you through it. First things first, choose your favorite exhibit. So I decided to choose something that is temporarily on loan to the museum, and that is Pharrell Williams hat. I heart Pharrell. Don't tell Mr. Utterback. So that's the exhibit that I chose. You can choose anything in the museum that you like. The second thing that you need to do is when you are looking at your favorite exhibit or you've selected your favorite exhibit, think about why people should want to see that exhibit. What reasons can you give to prove to somebody that this is interesting and worthwhile to see? So I brainstormed some ideas. Well, Pharrell is famous, and it's kind of cool to see something that belongs to a famous person, or belong to a famous person. Uh, the hat was everywhere. It went viral after he was at the Grammys, so that was another reason I thought of. And my last reason, it, <laughs> it got made fun of, but it was also high fashion. Uh, it was done by a designer. So I came up with three reasons why people should check out this exhibit. Next, I want to think about each reason and be like, okay, what facts and details can I share to give more information about this reason? So on your screen, you see one of my reasons, Pharrell is famous. Well, what details or facts could I share that would show that Pharrell is famous? Well, obviously, he's had a long musical career from the Neptunes up to the present. Um, he sings, he writes songs, he produces. Uh, he has an awesome song out, Come Get It Bay, right now. We, as we all know, the song Happy, you've probably heard it so many times you're sick of it, soundtrack for Despicable Me, and right now he's even on TV. He's currently a coach on their voice. What you're doing by doing some more brainstorming is you're coming up with ideas to fill your paragraph. That way you're not sitting there asking yourself, hmm, what do I write? How do I meet the 11 sentence minimum? Brainstorming will make your life so much easier. And to brainstorm fully and get organized, you need to use this. You need to organize ideas by completing the 11 sentence paragraph graphic organizer. Let's see what that looks like. First, it's an organizer. You are not writing your paragraph. So do you need to have complete sentences on a graphic organizer? The answer is no. First things first. When you're writing your paragraph, when you sit down to write, you want this to sort of be a roadmap that you can follow so it's very easy for you. So the top block, sentence one, topic sentence, all I want to do is say, okay, what do I want to open with? Well, I want to somehow get people's attention and I want to let them know I'm talking about Pharrell Williams' hat. 
So in this box, you're going to put what your overall topic is. Say what the exhibit is. And don't forget to write the phrase attention getter. That way you remember to do it. Then, do you remember those reasons I gave on the previous slides? Those are going to become my first main point, my second main point, and my third main point. For me, color coding helps, and I'm going to go in order. So my first main point was that Pharrell Williams is a famous singer and songwriter and producer. So what could I put here to elaborate? Does everyone see sentence three and sentence four? These are underneath sentence two because they relate to and they give more information about why Pharrell is a famous singer, songwriter, and producer. So I could elaborate a couple different ways. You might have more than two pieces of elaboration and that's great. Just squeeze them into the boxes any way you choose. So one way I might elaborate, well, I did say he was a singer-songwriter, so maybe I could name some of his songs, Get Lucky, Come Get It Bay, and Happy from the soundtrack for Despicable Me. I also said that he's famous and is a producer, and that's one of the things he uses to persuade people to join his team on The Voice. So maybe I'll mention that he's on The Voice. Now I have something to say about my first point by completing the organizer. Now that I have all the information for my first point, I could move on to my second point. Well, it went viral. It was popular. Everyone heard about it. People made fun of it on late night TV and on the internet. So what can I point to to prove that it went viral? Well, I could talk about how after the Grammys, uh, they had the Twitter parody and it went out to millions of viewers all over the globe. I could also mention that the hat was such a publicity stunt that Pharrell auctioned it off. He sold it to Arby's for $44,100 and all that money he gave to charity. Now, everything I have here all relates to my second point because the Grammy appearance, the Twitter parody, and the auction both show how it went viral and became sort of this crazy phenomenon or meme. Now I'm at my last point. It's a fashion icon. So now I want to talk about the fashion, who designed the hat, uh, a little bit more information about the hat itself. Well, it was designed by British designer Vivian Westwood, and I thought it was interesting. I learned this from the exhibit. She's actually made the hat for a long time. It's been around since 1982. That's the year I was born. Yes, that's old. Now, he bought it a few years ago. Uh, I also want to talk about that other people have worn this, and it used to be known as the mountain hat, not just Pharrell's hat or the Arby hat. And I thought it was interesting that it actually comes in a bunch of different colors, and it even has a straw version, which I think is kind of weird, but cool. Now I have all types of things that I can use to fill up my paragraph, but I don't want to forget about the ending. You want to start well, and you want to end well. A lot of people make the mistake with their concluding sentence that they just repeat what they had at the beginning. Always swerve on it and really think about what your purpose is. Well, my purpose was to persuade people to go see it, so I'm reminding myself to write a closing sentence telling people to go see it or driving it home, calling them to action. And that's really all there is to it, the 11 sentence graphic organizer, bam. So just a reminder, this 11 sentence graphic organizer is due next class, and then you'll be getting more information about how to post to the Fusion blog and how to comment on posts in your English classrooms. Have a great time on your field trip, guys. Don't forget to do the organizer. Bye.